Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to complete Volume 3 of Mike Costa's Venom run, which is called Lethal Protector, colon, Blood in the Water. And this time we're actually going to talk about that storyline. Because in the last episode, we talked about the one shot that was in here, issue 154, which is Skin Deep. And we kind of went into the psychology of the symbiote and it reflecting on its life from the moment it met Spider-Man all the way up till now when it's with Eddie. And Eddie is now injected with this new serum that Alchemex is giving him that helps take out some of the antibodies or whatever the chemical that was that he had in him before that the government gave him to keep him in line when he was bonded with toxin. So that stuff is making this symbiote, you know, his original symbiote, hard to connect with. Um, and so now that there's an antibody for it, they're starting to connect more and the symbiote is starting to see things more, but it still has trust issues and it's still hiding things from Eddie as we learn later on. Uh, but in this storyline, we just get a straightforward, fun story where it's uh, kind of like the dinosaur story we talked about before, and it even brings the dinosaur people back, the ones that were less still left at the end of the Stegron storyline. So this picks up where that left off, and there's some conclusion there. So this was clearly, like, I think at this point, probably Mike knew that his Venom run would come to an end at some point uh, within, you know, the next year or so from, from writing these stories. So I think he planned, okay, let's wrap up the Stegron stuff, let's wrap up the dinosaur people, and let's wrap up, uh, you know, the Moloids and, and a couple other elements, and that way we just have the Alchemex, the Eddie stuff left afterwards, and then uh, then we'll get into more of that in the Venom Inc. storyline, which will be our last uh, episode of Mike Costa. So that'll be coming up probably, maybe not the very next episode, but it'll be coming up soon, uh, for sure. So with this one, we get into uh, issues 155 to 158, um, which, you know, that's about a three, four issue arc there, and it's by Mark Bagley. So Mike Costa is writing it, but Mark Bagley, the, the amazing Mark Bagley, is actually drawing it and so you get his cover here and then this great uh opening here where they're bringing back lee price <laughs> you know lee price is still around you know he was arrested but now he has a lawyer that is like hey if lee price is you know he hasn't had his day in court yet as they say here and he is arrested for being venom but venom is still out there causing all kind of trouble and you know and popping up on the news and fighting the sprayer and all these other characters so how is lee price venom you know how is he being you know found guilty for being venom if he's if venom is still out there doing stuff so even though the court knows and the lawyers know that venom is an alien symbiote that can transfer to other people he's still the you know they're still trying to fudge it to make it look like hey you know lee might have been under mind control he was a soldier and he has no prior records of, of any wrongdoing so you know the lawyer is trying to defend him the best he can but in the middle of that defense these criminals decide, hey, you know what? That Lee Price guy, he was Venom, but he doesn't have any powers in here. We're new to jail. If we take out a big guy like him, someone who was Venom, if we kill him, then, uh, you know, that'll up our status here in prison. And so they go and try that. But Lee is still a trained soldier, and he beats the crap out of these guys. And there's three guys that attack him. He wounds one, like, a lot, <laughs> like, to near death. But the other two he kills, straight up kills them. Um, and so that's obviously going to make it a little harder for his lawyer to, you know, represent him and, and try to say that he's not a threat. But at the same time, the lawyer's like, hey, those guys attacked him. It's self-defense. We have it on camera. So that's what's happening in the background. And in the foreground, what we're getting is we're getting an Eddie Brock a symbiote story where him and the suit are still trying to work out the differences. They're still trying to get used to this new serum that Alchemex gave them. And the rage is still popping up. So whenever they stop criminals, there are times where the suit wants to just straight up eat people's brains. And it's really great to get these, you know, amazing images by Bagley again with the way he draws a symbiote, especially when it rages out. Uh, everything from his, you know, 90s work on Spider-Man when he did that, all the way up to the Ultimate Comic Universe when he did Ultimate Venom, and then back into the main Marvel Universe. So I always like seeing him draw the symbiote. I think he does a great job. Uh, but so Eddie is trying to work things out with the suit, trying to get it to calm its rage down. But then he also goes out there and is trying to get a job. So remember in the last uh, issue, it ended with him seeing a newspaper article about uh, someone, some like tabloid saying like that the scroll invasion was a hoax, uh, which obviously it wasn't. And the symbiote knows that and Eddie knows that uh, because they have dealings with it. And they were, you know, the suit was bonded to Matt Gargan at that time. So they know the scrolls were real and really invaded. 
but Eddie still was like, hey, it's a, it's a newspaper that might not ask a lot of questions about me. So he comes up with the name Mr. Sim uh, as his alias, which is just so bad. Eddie is not very good at uh, aliases. <laughs> um, so anyway, he, uh, he says, I'm Mr. Sim, and he goes to the lady that runs that paper, and he's talking to her about journalism. He actually wants to do kind of real journalism. He's like, you know, I used to be a journalist, and I want to use a different name now because... You know, I don't want my past to come back, you know, and I, I want to just do what you tell me to do, but also tell really good human interest stories and, and, you know, good stories about, you know, justice and, you know, taking down bad guys and all these things. And she's like, yeah, I don't want any of that stuff. I want stuff like people live on the moon, you know, like or there, there's men that live on the moon and there's dinosaur people in the sewers, you know, which is a rumor I've heard about. And she's like, I want stories like that. And Eddie, of course, like, okay, there is dinosaur people and there are men that live on the moon. And so he says that he's like, but there are men that live on the moon, inhumans, obviously. And she goes, that's the spirit. And he's like, Ugh. so the suit's like, eat her, Eddie, <laughs> which I love. He's like, eat her, Eddie. And then Eddie's like, uh, I hear you. I hear you, but we're not going to eat her. But I love that because it very much reminded me of like the movie humor where the suit's like, Whenever it doesn't like somebody, it's like, eat him or eat her, you know? Uh, and he's like, no, we're not going to eat Mrs. Chen. You know, obviously that those stories came later from the movies, but that humor is here in, in this Mike Costa run. So I like that a lot. I thought that was uh, fun to just hear the symbiote say, eat her. And he's like, uh, no, shut up. <laughs> so uh, so Eddie is now, you know, aimless again. He's like, I, I, I want to have a job. I want to work. I want to do these things, but no one's going to give Eddie Brock the time of day. And if that newspaper won't even give me the time of day like she wants me to write you know weird clickbaity stories and that was what I loved is that it's Eddie who is not a really a millennial in this run he's kind of dealing with millennials and he kind of doesn't have a patience for them <laughs> and even like some Gen Zers and stuff like he's just doesn't people that are hipsters and have like uh, like curly mustaches and like you know just look like they have a certain look you know he's like uh, I don't like these people <laughs> he's like I save innocent people but it doesn't mean I have to like them, uh, you know, to an extent. He's like, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. He goes, but my God, he goes, some of these people are just idiots and a-holes and uh, pompous and arrogant and entitled. And I, I was like, this is so great to, to pluck Eddie, like I said, who's not really a millennial, and put him in surrounded by, you know, parts of New York that uh, are different nowadays, you know. Uh, you know, and so he's living in these areas and he's like, you know, this neighborhood used to be different, it used to be a lot more hard-edged and tougher and he's like, and now look at this place, you know, so it, it's kind of, it's great because it gives you a perspective, you know, you want your characters, whether you agree with them or not, you want them to have perspectives on things and opinions about stuff, because that's what makes them characters. And so I think Mike Costa does a really good job in this, on these very small moments where Eddie is dealing with a guy when, when Eddie's eating Dan Dan noodles at an you know, Asian restaurant, and he's talking to the symbiote, and some hipster dude with like a, you know, very a well-groomed beard or whatever, and like a nose piercing kind of turns to Eddie. He's like, who are you talking to, man? Like, you know, because obviously these these guys will always try to act tough. And Eddie goes, it's New York. Mind your own business. <laughs> and then the guy's like, okay. You know, obviously because he's a, you know, a pussycat. <laughs> Just trying to act tough. And Eddie's like, I'm not having it, you stupid uh, Gen Z -er. <laughs> you know, So I don't know. I like that. I'm not trying to like insult anybody, but I just, I've seen that happen in real life in instances like that where people think they're tough and they act tough and, uh, and they get put in their place, you know? And so I like that that was in here because it's, it's, it's a humorous moment, but it's a very Eddie Brock thing, I feel. Though it's very true to the character. So I liked a lot of that stuff, but Eddie, he goes underground uh, to, you know, to eat. He's like, the symbiote's like, I need to eat actual meat. Like not these Dan Dan noodles, none of this crap. Like I need to eat like something bloody and uh, like a steak, but super rare or whatever. And Eddie's like, fine, we'll go down. We'll talk to the dinosaur people. Maybe they found some rats or some monsters down there we can eat those and the symbiote's like yay okay let's do it so they go down into the sewers and the dinosaur people are now in battle with the moloids from mole man which is a fantastic four villain and they're all fighting this giant uh, moloid that shows up to try to eat everybody need all the dinosaur people and they're fighting over territory or whatever and eddie's like no stop like they're living beings just like you are like you know they're they're things that were created and brought to life or, or, you know, led like a Pied Piper the way you were with Stegron, the Mole Man did the same thing to these creatures. Uh, and they've lived down here for generations. Like, we should respect their territory too. But in the process, one of their big Moloid creatures is killed. So Eddie goes to the Moloid and says, look, we're sorry, this was an accident. You know, um, you did attack us. And, you know, this was the price that happened. But I, I try to stop this. 
we want a peaceful resolution here. Will you please go back to where you are and let the dinosaur people have this territory in the sewer? And if you want to bring your your dead back with you to bury it, you can. And the Moloid's like, well, it's too big. You know, we brought our big one of our biggest Moloids here, and you killed it. There's not enough of us to bring it back, so you know we'll, we'll just leave. But you know, thanks for ending the battle basically and not killing us. So the Moloids leave. And uh, the dinosaur people and Venom stay behind to eat the giant Moloid. He's like, Eddie just goes, well, I guess since they're not bringing the body with them, we'll respect this beast for attacking us and we'll eat it. <laughs> you know, uh, I guess I don't know how that's respect. He goes, but we'll eat this. So all of the dinosaur people are fed at least and they're not starving because they were just kind of feeding off rats and things like that. He's like, so we'll all eat a big meal tonight. And then we'll go back to coming up with another solution tomorrow. And all the um, dinosaur people call Eddie the savior or Venom. They're like, you're the savior. Thanks for coming to help us. And he's like, look, I'm not a savior. I'm just a guy. I'm trying to do what I think is right. And, you know, I, I, I but I struggle with it. So, so I'll come back and check on you from time to time. And then meanwhile, while that's happening, that fact sheet news reporter, whatever, that lady that Eddie tried to get a job with, she kind of ran that rumor story about the dinosaur people. And that gets the attention of Craven the Hunter. So that's where the rest of the story is. It's basically Craven coming to New York, being sanctioned to come to New York by the new mayor of New York, which is the Kingpin. So the Kingpin deputizes Craven the Hunter and says, look, you're going to come here. They do a whole press conference and they say, you're going to come here and you're going to hunt down these dinosaur creatures because they're good Americans that live in these streets, you know, like the, any politician, like they're just full of crap. And he's like, you know, these great Americans, there's underneath them are monsters. So we're going to hire this guy who hunts monsters for a living. And he's going to come and clean up our city. And we're going to have the SWAT teams and, and special forces working with him. And he's going to go into the sewers and take down all these monsters and capture them and bring them to justice. And of course, Craven's like, I ain't capturing shit. I'm killing everything I see. Uh, so he leads a SWAT team down underground to go look for the dinosaur people. But while he's down there, you know, he's hunting, he hunts this one uh, woman named Tana. And this is what I really like that Mike Costa did. He introduces this character named Tana and you find out she used to work for Alchemex. So she's one of the people that has a lab coat from Alchemex, um, much like the first dinosaur that Eddie ran into was. And they give her backstory and they talk about how she came to this country, um, you know, uh, illegally, basically. She Like she came to America, but she worked really hard, she got a job, she got her citizenship, and then she got a chance to work at Alchemex because they don't ask a lot of questions, you know, people's background, but she actually went to school and studied biology and, and chemistry when she became a scientist, but she still felt underappreciated and unseen and, uh, and still had uh, horror stories about where she grew up and what country she came from, and she wanted to always be strong, and that's what led her to agree to go side with Stegron. So I love that. I mean, that's great character stuff there because you're at first they're just they just blindly say or randomly say, oh, yeah, he had some followers in the lab that liked the cut of his jig. And they were like and they followed him into the sewers and he turned him into dinosaur people. But you're like, why would anyone want to do that? So Mike Costa gives a backstory to Tana here about why someone would do that. And it's interesting. I mean, it's still it's still silly because you're like, why still? Why would anyone do that? But when you hear her story, you're like, OK, he put in some things that justified it. To the character of why she would make these choices and i like that so she was hunted by craven first but she got away barely and so she goes to eddie she's like she, you know he she shows up at his apartment she's like i'm i made sick on your bed she threw up on his bed she's like i'm sorry and he's like it's okay like what what's happening she's like you're the savior you need to help us someone is down in the sewers hunting us and they try to kill me and uh, luckily i you know fell into like a, a river bank or a sewer bank or whatever and, and got flushed away and she goes, so I came here. I could follow the scent of your alien. Like, that's how we all know where you are. Um, so I came here, and I'm sorry. And Eddie's like, that's okay. Show me where in the sewer. So they go down into the sewer. They run into another dinosaur guy, and he's like, look, she's been missing for a few days. Tana has let, let us handle the situation. If there's a, someone down here hunting us, we'll work together, and we'll get it done. Don't worry, Savior. We don't want to bother you with this. We can handle our own problems. And so Eddie's kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, all right, well, good luck. And as soon as he turns his back, that dinosaur that was trying to get, you know, t was telling Tana, let's go back to the others and put a search party together and go look for this hunter. As Eddie turns his back, that dinosaur gets shot and killed right in the head by Craven the Hunter. And then uh, then Craven sees Venom in its cr in his crosshairs and is like, well, this was unexpected because obviously Craven knows the suit. Craven wore the black costume at one point to hunt Spider Man and defeat Spider Man. So he knows of this suit. So it's the same suit just with a monster head on it. And obviously Craven knows what Venom is too. 
So he's like, you know, you move like the spider, you 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 attack like the spider, you have Spider-Man's morals in a way, because, you know, Craven's like, it's just dinosaur people, who cares? I'll kill them for you. And Venom's like, no, they're innocent. There's some of them are people, and they didn't, uh, some of them chose this and some of them didn't, but they've learned their lesson, uh, the ones who did choose, and they're good people, and they're not hurting anyone. And Craven's like, well, tell that to the college kids that were eaten a couple weeks ago. And he's like, that was an isolated incident, and I've stopped that. It's never going to happen again. And Craven's like, oh my God, he's like, I hate these ideals, I hate these morals. These are monsters. They're they're living underneath, you know, the citizens of this city. I'm gonna kill them. And Venom's like, you don't care about the people of this city, dude. You're you're Craven the Hunter. You've tried to kill numerous people in this city. So they get into a big battle. And what I love is that it's an intense and brutal battle. Like it's really good. And Venom gets shot in the shoulder by like a like a gun that would uh, with a bullet that would penetrate like an elephant hide. Um, you know, there's a bear trap that gets used on Eddie, and it like traps his leg. All these things. Craven set up all these traps to take down these dinosaur people and he uses them on Eddie instead and Venom and it is brutal it's an awesome battle and when Eddie gets hit by that bullet he's like look like what's up symbiote and the symbiote's like dude I'm not bulletproof I'm not impenetrable that bullet is huge that shell that casing that went in us is massive like we, like I'm or the bullet part that went in us it's massive like I, I can't do I can't do anything against that he's like so I'll try to help you heal I'll pull the bullet out so it does but Eddie's losing too much blood. But luckily, he destroyed most of Craven's weapons. So Craven doesn't go after Venom because he has nothing to hunt Venom with. Uh, he's like, he's got no knife. He's got no gun. Uh, the gun that shot the big bullets, that's destroyed. So then the symbiote, like, you know, Craven says, all right, I'll, I'll get you. I'm going to go get reinforcements. I'm going to go get more SWAT team members. And we're going to come back and just wipe this place out. And I have another, um, you know, trick up my sleeve. So while Craven goes to do that, Eddie is being led back to the surface world by the symbiote and they find a couple like in the uh like i guess making out in an alley or something like that and uh and that's when venom is like or the symbiote's like don't worry eddie i can help you heal we just need to eat so i don't know if he actually eats these people i, I don't think it says that or maybe it does later where it, it says it stopped itself from doing it but it seems like he's going to eat these people but then you cut to dr steve and dr steve is at alchemex watching uh the fact sheet on the news and they're talking about the dinosaurs. And, and it's funny because even uh, Dr. Steve is like, oh, I miss J. Jonah Jameson, <laughs> which I thought was funny because, again, it's like a, it's a character thing, right? Like uh, it tells you a lot about Dr. Steve. He liked someone on the news like Jameson, who was like a loud braggart type, you know, that would uh, always yell about, you know, Spider-Man being a menace and all this other stuff. And apparently Dr. Steve enjoys that kind of content. And he doesn't he doesn't like someone who's speaking calmly and is talking about dinosaurs in the sewers. And then when he hears that part, he's like, oh, God. OK, so now it's, you know, Eddie didn't deal with the dinosaurs in the sewers like he said he did. That's going to come back to us at Alchemex. And then right when that happens, the window shatters and the suit brings Eddie there. And they're like, we need your help because they're deteriorating. They're falling apart. So this is an intense thing. Like, I mean, Craven did, you know, he, he hit Venom where it hurts. And now Eddie is like trying to heal from it and he can't. Um, so he goes to Dr. Steve who stitches him up with his shoelace <laughs> and does a bad job at it. So they're talking and he's like, look, don't tell Liz about this. Don't tell Liz I was here. And he's like, well, I can't because if I do, she's gonna know I know about the dinosaur people. And he's like, so just do me a favor, go back down there, deal with whatever this is, make sure those dinosaur people can't be traced back to us. And then neither of us have to talk about this with Liz ever. And she'll never have to know. And then Craven, that's when Craven comes on a TV, you know, being deputized by the Kingpin, saying, like, okay, he has permission to hunt these monsters down. So then Dr. Steve's like, please go fix this mess. Please. I don't, I just want to go back to doing my job um, and not uh, having all these secrets. So please go deal with this guy. And so, uh, and, and deal with Craven and deal with the dinosaurs. So Venom's like, fine. Uh, just, you know, let's keep this off the books. And Dr. Steve's like, fine. That's, that's what I want too. So meanwhile, the, the Lee Price story is still going on, and he brings the newspaper showing that, you know, Venom is out there. He's wanted for a cannibal attack. The news is still possibly blaming, some are blaming dinosaurs, others are blaming Venom, and that's also just the mayor putting a spin on it, because Craven told Mayor Fisk, like, hey, I ran into Venom down there, so plast some newspapers to make Venom look like public enemy number one, and, uh, and that way it'll make my job hunting easier, but I also need a second favor from you. So while Eddie goes back down to the sewers, he takes down one of the SWAT members and is following, he's with the group, um, moving up to, to find where Craven is, because now the SWAT team is down in the sewers, helping and backing up Craven. He, uh, he even uses camouflage ability again, which is great. 
Um, but he uh, gets close enough to Craven and grabs him, and that's when Craven reveals, you know, my new friend that I made, Mayor Fisk, he introduced me to an old friend of yours, and that's where Shriek comes in. So I was like, this is awesome. So she's working alongside Craven, and she blasts Eddie really good and almost kills him and causes a massive, uh, you know, cave-in under in the sewers, and above it is a residential area with more hipsters <laughs> and Gen Zers, um, and uh, and this building starts to cave in, and it it's only being held up by Venom and his webbing and Eddie, and uh, who is now being crushed. So it actually reminds me of that old Spider-Man comic where he was under the weight of a building and he was holding it up, and he used his you know f found the strength within his willpower to lift it back up and get out of there um, and to save people and to go save on May and stuff. So that's uh that that kind of reminds me of that. So while you know Eddie and the suit are dying underneath the weight of this building, Craven and Shriek are now leading the special force team. Well, he he tells Shriek he's like don't let the special force team see you. They don't know that you're working with me, you know, and this is a mayor fist thing. So you stay back and stay out of the sight, and I'm going to lead these uh, soldiers to the dinosaur people. So he does, and they they first he releases a bunch of rats into the sewers. To, as bait and it brings all the dinosaur people together and they think oh my god you know hallelujah the, the rats the, you know we have all this food that just showed up on our doorstep and tana's like don't you find that weird like i just saw one of us get killed and i ran away the the, the savior is down here fighting the guy who was responsible and we lost track of him and now we're here and all these rats show up she's like i don't like this and she's right not to like that because obviously it's a trap from craven so you know that's happening you have this great shot here like i said it reminds me of the the days of Spider-Man when he was stuck under the building. And it's Eddie saying, like, my leg is broken, my ribs are broken, like, I can't move. The symbiote, uh, the chemical that are, that's in me has, you know, weakened a little bit the symbiote. So it's, like, pouring out of my pores, which is a sign that it may be dying as well. So I just got to sit here and hold on as long as I can and stay conscious and stay awake. Because once the drugs wear off, then the suit will just feel rage again. And it can, it'll come out and it'll bond with me and it'll heal my wounds, but I may not be able to control it. He's like, so I have, if I do survive this, it may not be good for anyone else. I may try to kill people. So, uh, so, you know, Eddie's stuck in that situation. And then we get to issue 158, the final issue, and the dinosaur people are being killed. The, the bait worked. Craven comes in, starts killing dinosaur people, captures Tana uh, because she sneaks up on him. So the only weapon he has is like a net gun. So he shoots the net. That's when the uh, soldiers show up and they're like, hey, you know, what are you doing? You're not supposed to kill these people. We're supposed to, you know, capture them and bring them back because, you know, that's we want justice. You know, we don't want just dead bodies. And we heard some of these people are human. So there are scientists that, you know, Mayor Fisk wants to, you know, check them out and see if they can reverse the dinosaur process. And Craven's like, eh, don't worry. I can tell the difference between the human ones and the non-human ones. Let me kill what I want to kill. And they're like, dude, you don't, we don't work for you. You work for us. And he's like, whatever. He's like, just stay out of my way and let me, you know, I'll end this problem for you guys. And you can take that one back with you, you know? And Tana's like, no, like, I, you know, I'm getting out of here. So she breaks free and runs off. And the soldiers are like, should we go after it? And there's one of the soldiers, the lead SWAT guy is like, uh, follow her back through a pack of uh, dinosaur people. No, he's like, we're going to stay back. Like Craven said, and we're going to keep an eye on him. So I like that, that these people, they do work for the mayor, but they are still like, there's a good group of them that are good cops and good SWAT members. And they, and they know what right and wrong is. And they know following this Craven guy is not like, probably not on, not, not on the level. And so that seed is planted here because that's going to pay off a little bit later. But the suit does gain control back or it starts rebuilding itself and it bonds with Eddie. And then they, they're still holding the building up, but Tana comes and she's like, I was able to track you through the smell of your symbiote and he's and so the symbiote grabs her and he's like who's there and she's like it's me tana she's like i'm here to help you i can dig you out and he's like don't do it because the building above will crumble he's like do me do it do me a different favor go up there and free those people like make sure they get out of the building and that they're safe and then once they are let me know you know like and i'll get out of here and she's like no i did something else i brought friends and the moloids show up and the moloids all help eddie keep the building up so that the people above can be freed and, and saved. And Eddie can, re, you know, uh, bond with the symbiote. And it's starting to, you know, rage out. And it wants to hurt people. And it grabs Tana. But Eddie is able to control it. He's like, no, symbiote, like, stop. That's Tana. She's our friend. She brought the moloids. They're helping. 
So again, it's Mike Costa wrapping all this up, putting a, a, a nice organic bow, I feel, on this storyline. And, and so bringing the Moloids back because they owe Eddie one. And so they're like, all right, we'll help hold this building up. And, we'll, and those people are going to be saved. So I'm like, cool. And so now Eddie's like, all right, now I can go and fight uh, Shriek and Craven, And you guys make sure these people are safe. So again, while all that's going on, you have the court, you know, trying to prosecute Lee Price. But his lawyer is able to get him off because he, you know, verbiage and all these things that usually happens in court cases. It's all about the verbiage and how things are worded and what actually is being charged to the person. And basically the lawyer is able to, to weasel out that Lee Price was even in control. And he blames that the symbiote itself bonded with Lee and has telepathic powers and made Lee do those things. And so because of that, and by throwing Mayor Fisk's name around um, almost as a threat in a way, he's able to get uh, you know Lee Price out of jail. So now Lee Price is going to be exiting jail and that'll set up the Venom Inc. storyline next. But first, we got to wrap up this story. So the final battle with Venom and Craven is a bloody one. Again, it's really awesome. The dinosaur people are there eating their rats, and uh, you know Craven's trying to sneak up and kill them. But Eddie comes in at the last second and, and saves them. But then Shriek starts blasting Eddie, and she's getting the one up again. And Eddie's like, I, you know, I can't fight this. And and the suit, you know, the suit's like, I hate this chick. Like she's her power does hurt us a lot. But then Eddie says. Nah, let the rage come out. Like, forget the chemical, forget the stuff I was pumping you with. Go crazy and eat them. And the suit's like, yes! So he suits up and goes nuts. And he just starts beating the living crap, grabs a Shriek, swings her head first, and her head collides with Craven's head, knocks them both out. Probably massive concussion, breaks their faces and noses, I'm sure. And, uh, and then right as he goes over to Craven, he grabs his head. He's getting ready to tear it off and eat it. And Tana stops him. She says, no, don't medicine like because eddie told her he's like you know i'm probably going to lose it i'm going to give my symbiote permission to go crazy so after you and the moloid save everyone in this building go back to my apartment get my medicine and come back here and she does and she injects venom and uh, essentially saves him from killing craven which i'm kind of like oh i would have loved that though i love craven the hunter but he's died in the comics already but i would really love for him to die by getting his head ripped off by venom uh so sorry i love you craven but that would have been a cool way for you to go um, but of course, you know, they, they never really kill people permanently in comics. I thought Craven would have stayed dead permanently because he had kids and stuff. And I thought they were just going to make them the new Cravens, but they eventually brought him back. We talked about that on the Ben Riley stuff, but still that, that would have been a cool death to have Venom kill him. But, uh, but anyway, so at the end, the SWAT team show up, they're aiming guns at everybody. And Tana says, no, look, we're not here to hurt people. Those people that were killed, the, the college students, that was a one-off thing. We're not here to eat people anymore. The savior, Eddie, you know, or the Venom taught us that. Please don't arrest him. Please don't take him. Please don't hurt us. We will go with the Moloids deep underground and live with them. And we'll find rats and things to eat down there. We don't want any trouble. The real villains here are Craven and Shriek. And they're like, yeah, I recognize Shriek. Like, she is wanted. And they're like, and yeah, why were we, you know, I know the mayor deputized this guy, but he was clearly out of his mind and he killed, you know, he actually held the head of a dinosaur up at that press conference. He kills and murders. They're like, we'll sort this out later, but we're arresting Craven and Shriek and we'll bring that, we'll bring Shriek back to Ravencroft and Craven will let, you know, whatever, you know, authorities want to do with him, uh, but we'll arrest him and bring him back. If you guys want to go, like you can go. And that, that was like that one SWAT member, the leader of them from earlier, you know, who has like a, you know, has at least a good enough heart to know what good and, you know, right and wrong are. He let the dinosaur, he's like, all right, we'll give you this opportunity. You go and we'll take these two. I have enough paperwork to deal with now that I have to say that we turned on our own guy, you know, like uh, Craven was working with us, but clearly he was also working with the Shriek lady. We're going to have a lot of paperwork to deal with. So you go and you take your venom with you and we'll take the, you know, uh, Craven and Shriek. So uh, so then at the end, Eddie comes to with the symbiote and they're like, you know, we owed you one savior and thank you for, you know, fighting for us and helping us. But we will go with the Moloid so you don't have to worry about us anymore and we'll live in harmony with them. So Eddie's like, you know, thank you. We appreciate that. And, uh, you know, good luck. And if you ever do need help again, we're your lethal protector, basically. Uh, and then the book ends with Lee Price, you know, getting his uh, release from prison. And he's now they're like, you know, you say the generic thing that when you leave in prison, they're like, stay out of trouble. And he's like, yeah, don't worry. I don't plan on getting any trouble. Uh, but of course, he's going to be a lot of trouble coming up in the next story arc, which is called Venom Inc., which will be the end of our talks with Mike Costa's run of this character, because we already talked about the final volume, 
which was uh, the nativity, which is this one here. We already The issues that are in here, there's three issues in here. We already discussed them on the show. And if you're watching these in order on the playlist where I put all the comic book stories in order, then you'll see those. They'll be after we discuss this. Even though we recorded our discussions of these like three years ago, I think, somewhere around there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so it, you'll see a, an apartment change for sure when you watch those episodes because those are from my old apartment in California. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so enjoy those episodes when you do watch them if you haven't watched them yet. But uh, the next episode, our final episode for Lee Price will be Venom Inc. And I'm not going to record that today. It's Thursday. I got a lot of other videos and stuff I got to do. Um, and my head has been pounding. I've had this light in my eye for like an hour and a half now. So I'm going to go and uh, try to edit these and get them up for you guys next week. But uh, give me like another couple days or another week or so and I'll try to get this out to you as well um but this will wrap up my costa and then after that we'll get back into the symbiote spider-man stuff with uh peter david and some of his mini series that he's been writing we'll cover those and talk about those and then i'll try to figure out what else to do there's still some alternate reality stories to do there's a couple one-offs where venom appeared in a couple books like she hulk and a couple other stories we'll get into some of those as well and just kind of try to wrap that stuff up and then if there's any movie news about, you know, Venom appearing anywhere else or any discussions to be had there um, or box office numbers when we get the final numbers before the Blu-ray comes out, we'll talk about that too. And there has been a change on the Blu-ray date. So maybe I'll make that episode coming up soon because that'll be a quick one where we just talk about the new release dates for the Blu-ray and the digital release of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So let me know what you think of this story down below. I really enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun, like the Stegron story. And of course, it was great seeing Craven and him fighting Venom. And uh, I would like to see that with the Craven movie. Even though I'm not excited about who they cast as Craven, it would be really cool, though, to see if Craven is kind of the, if this is a monster universe, if they do Man Wolf to be like their werewolf story, they got Morbius to be their Dracula, they got Venom to be like Jekyll and Hyde almost, or some kind of, you know, Frankenstein monster in a way, like he's uh, the muscle, I always say. Um, and then you can have, uh, you know, Von Helsing as your know, Craven as the Von Helsing character hunting them all down, uh, which would be really cool. So they could still work even without Spider-Man could still work. So let me know what your thoughts of that are too down below and we'll talk more Craven stuff. Yeah, maybe in the near future. Thank you so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.